First, I'd like to talk to you about what to look for when buying a flatbed trailer. Now, a flatbed trailer is not very mechanical. So if you buy one that's engineered and built properly, it should last you a lifetime. The two main beams in the trailer need to be protected. And what I mean by that, anything made out of steel, the more you flex it, the more you twist it, develops metal fatigue. You need to protect the main beam of your trailer so it does not develop metal fatigue. That's about the only thing that can go wrong with a trailer that you can't replace. Now, how do you properly engineer a trailer where it won't develop this? Well, there are several things you can do. On Red Rhinos, every trailer we build gets a torque tube. Some people call it a torsion tube that runs the entire length of the trailer on the underside. This is a piece of pipe that is gusseted in three places. What this piece of pipe does, it absorbs the twist that you would place on a trailer if you were to load something on the side of it. Now, I'm sure you've loaded trailers before. You put something heavy on it, you see it twist down, you don't think much about it. But over the years and over enough time, you'll eventually develop some cracks in your main beam. The other thing we do on the Red Rhino to protect it from flex and twist is this trailer has no channel iron in it. With the Red Rhino, we went to rectangular tubing. Now, why did we do that? Well, a rectangle is a four-sided structural shape versus a piece of channel iron, which is a three-sided structural shape. So we can add a lot more rigidity to the trailer without adding weight to it using rectangular tubing. So your Red Rhino is gonna have all rectangular tubing side rails, bumper, and cross members. The third thing that we want to look for is you want to take out the longitudinal stress of the main beam. Now, how do you get longitudinal stress? This is where the beam bows in the center. Usually, it occurs when you're loading something on the ramps. You pull up on the back of it, the weight of the tractor or whatever equipment you're loading pushes down on the back, and the front tends to lift up. Now, if it's hooked to your truck, it's going to cause that main beam to bow and flex. How did we accommodate that? Our ramps have a, what we call a ground adjusting stabilizer. First, there are two hinges to it, so that if it gets to the limit of the first hinge and it still hadn't touched the ground, it'll drop down further. Then we have the stabilizers that are actually can fold down or you can leave them up that absorb all of the weight of the load that's being put on this trailer. As you'll see, you can load these trailers without being hooked to a piece of equipment, and it won't cause them to lift up at all. Going past the engineering of a trailer, there's some other features to look for. And I'll just kind of start here at the front. This is a Red Rhino, and this is a competitor's trailer over here. And as you glance at them, they look very similar. And unless you know what you're doing, you'll assume one's the same as the other, and and just buy strictly on price and not on the overall value of the trailer. But let's start here. You'll notice this trailer has a beam neck. This is a 12 inch 19 pound beam. It's exactly the same as the main beams that run through the trailer. Competitors trailer, they stop at the main beam and they come out with a 10 inch channel iron neck. When you're buying a trailer, check out the size of your toolbox. Make sure you got a toolbox that's going to hold all the chains, binders, straps, winches, and everything that you might need. The competitor's trailer, you can see it's about half the size. Now I'm going to show you a few little things where competitors cut cost and you don't think about it, but they, over the life of your trailer, they really make a difference to you. One thing I want to point out is the landing jacks. If you'll notice on the Red Rhino, this is what's called a spring-loaded jack. In other words, you hook to your truck, you crank it up, you pull that pin, the pad pops up, and you're done. On a competitor's trailer, those little handles on the pad, once you pull the pin, you've got to bend way over and pull that pad up and then lock it in place. Now, as we go back through the trailer, a couple other features. The cross members we've already talked about, this trailer will have rectangle tubing on 16-inch centers. These. On the competitor's trailer are on 18 inch centers. And I've seen some trailers that are even out to 24 inches. But obviously, if you're on
closer centers, it gives more strength and rigidity to the trailer. I want to point out the side steps. It's a serrated grip, so you won't slip on it. It's got a handhold here. Competitors usually take a piece of flat iron, and it's slick and it's smooth, and if your boots are muddy, you can stick a leg right through there and hurt yourself. As I walk back through the trailer, if you'll notice on a competitor's trailer, the floor plate over the wheel wells just covers each tire. On the Red Rhino, it covers the entire length of the wheel well. Now, another thing I should point out is it's not a big deal, but it's just an attempt of competitors to cut costs, and they use a hanger that's not as wide as what we use on the Red Rhino. How's that important to you? If our tires are spread a little further apart than theirs are, then we're distributing the weight more evenly on the trailer than the competitors are. And as we've already talked about, what's going to last longer? The one that distributes the weight better. Last, let's cover the ramps again. We talked about it a little bit earlier, but these are so important to eliminate the longitudinal stress of the main beams. As you can see, they're double hinged, and then with the stabilizers, they are on the ground, and that's going to absorb any weight of piece of equipment that you're loading on it. We also offer a hydraulic dovetail trailer. Now this trailer is good if you don't want to mess with lifting ramps anymore or if you want your wife to do all the hauling for you. She doesn't have to lift anything. But basically you have a nine foot dovetail that goes down to the ground hydraulically. Once you're loaded, it lifts back up and then lift over 10,000 pounds so you can completely load the trailer. Let me summarize it like this. When you're looking for a flatbed trailer, first make sure it's properly engineered so it will protect those main beams. The boards can be replaced, the tires can be replaced, the couplers can be replaced, but if your main beams develop metal fatigue, then your trailer is not worth anything, and it should last you a lifetime. Once you've determined that, look for the other features, the oversized toolbox, the side steps, the spring-loaded pads, things that are gonna make your life easier. 